Grant. Saturday night, rising star Sebastian the Towering Inferno Fundora steps up to take down undefeated champion Tim Zhu. But the wonder from down under has other ideas. Bring it on. Plus, world champ Rolly Romero never misses words. Pitbull, all bark, no bite. But Mexican powerhouse Pitbull Cruz is ready to silence the trash talker. It's a night full of world title fights, live on PBC Pay-Per-View on Prime Video. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Las Vegas, Nevada. We are here at the MGM Grand as we are getting closer to Saturday night. It is PBC Pay-Per-View on Prime Video, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific Time from T-Mobile Arena here in Las Vegas. If you are looking to make your way here to the fighting capital of the world, tickets are available at AXS. Dot com, or you can watch PBC pay-per-view on Prime Video. What a night of action that we have as PBC kicks off their 2024 campaign with the bang. Four world championship fights on our pay-per-view card. Our main event features unbeaten rising star from Australia, Tim Zhu, headlining here in Las Vegas for the first time, going head-to-head -head against the towering inferno, Sebastian Fundora, also on the line, the vacant WBC Super Welterweight Championship. Yes, two world championships will be decided. Our co-main event, it'll be the WBA Super Lightweight Champion of the World, Rolando Roli Romero defending his crown against a very determined challenger from Mexico, Isaac Pitbull Cruz. Also on that evening, it'll be the WBA middleweight champion of the world from Cuba, Edislandi, the American dream, Alada, defending his title against a very passionate Michael Zarafa from Melbourne, Australia. And to begin our pay-per-view portion at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific time, it'll be the WBC flyweight champion of the world, Julio Cesar Martinez, defending his title against Angelino Cordova of Venezuela. But also, ladies and gentlemen, PBC on Prime Video Action will precede the pay-per-view. It'll stream live and for free starting at 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific time. It'll feature rising unbeaten middleweight Elijah Garcia. No stranger to Las Vegas. He will take on Kyron Davis, who is no small task. That'll be in our main event. Also, super welterweight contenders. Sergei Boachuk will go head-to-head -head against Brian Mendoza that for the interim WBC Super Welterweight Championship. The event promoted by TGB Promotions. The main event is promoted in association with No Limit Boxing and Samson Boxing. And as I mentioned, tickets are available at AXS.com or you can watch it in the comfort of your own home, PBC Pay-Per-View on Prime Video. Well, it gives me a great honor and pleasure to introduce a man who is promoted literally all over the world. And I believe that it's only a matter of time before he gets his rightful place into the International Boxing Hall of Fame, one of the smartest minds that we've ever seen regarding the history of the sweet science. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the esteemed Mr. Tom Brown. Thank you, Ray. That's why I always love Ray. You now, we've got a great matchup uh, Saturday night in our all-action main event between Zoo and Fedora. And we're thrilled to be bringing this fight once again to the T-Mobile Arena. You know, we got the terrible news on Thurman's injury. That was on a Sunday. We went to work immediately, and by late Monday afternoon, we had a press release out announcing this new fight. Many people even called it an upgrade. It went from a non-title fight to being a two-belt, 154-pound unification fight. So thankfully, both Tim Zhu and Sebastian Fandora have that old school fighter mentality. We reached out right away to Matt and George Rose with No Limit Boxing, told them about the injury and what we were thinking about with replacement, and pretty much immediately they got back to us with the let's go. Same thing on Fedora's side with Samson and Team Fedora. And there's much more on this card than just this great main event. We also have three other meaningful, high quality world championship fights. It's gonna be a great night, Got a lot of fighters to get to today, so we'll see y'all Saturday. Thank you. All right, Mr. Tom Brown, greatly appreciate all that he does. And as you mentioned, let's get to the fighters that'll be involved in a Saturday night's 
blockbuster night of action. I want to bring up a man who has a record of 22 wins, three losses, 16 wins coming by way of knockout from Albuquerque, New Mexico, now training in Las Vegas. I want to acknowledge his esteemed trainer, Ismael Salas, who is with him, ladies and gentlemen. Just an astute boxing mind, Ismail Salas, the trainer of uh, Brian Mendoza. This man recently challenged Tim Zhu in Australia, losing a decision, but he owns a knockout victory over Sebastian Fundora in one of 2023's biggest upsets. One thing about this man, he always comes in shape, he always comes in prepared, and he's always ready to go. He will make sure that the fight fans get their money's worth. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Brian Mendoza. Hey, guys. Um, just want to start off thinking, you know, um, Al Heyman, PPC, Luis de Cuba, you know, the whole team that made this happen. Um, you know, it's funny. I was just thinking, uh, like, six years ago, I came to Vegas. I was trying to see, you know, who I'd signed with and everything, and I think it was for the – maybe the Pacquiao Browner fight and actually came up here and took a fake picture, you know, manifesting one day that I'd be up here. And then here we are, man. Um, it's just like I always say, you know, hard work and everything uh, gets you here. And we just knew, you know, I, di I didn't know. Uh, they told me to kind of be ready maybe as a backup for this fight. They said me, uh, might be sending me somewhere in like April or something to get ready. I had no idea. But, um, you know, me and my team were just always grinding, always grinding and staying ready for whatever uh, the second I get that call. So when I got this call for this fight, there was no hesitation. I want to be on this uh, level of – the fights, you know, I belong at the top level. I still think um, right now I'm the number two in the division behind Tim Zhu, and um, it's time to show that again Saturday night. So just tune in, be ready for an action-packed fight. Brian Mendoza, ladies and gentlemen. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to bring in, uh, and first of all, acknowledge the trainer of Brian Mendoza's adversary, Manny Robles, ladies and gentlemen. Manny has done things at the absolute highest level having helped to lead world champions also. Uh, Sergey Bogachuk is being promoted by Tom Loeffler's 360 Promotions. Tom Loeffler in the house here. Great to see Tom as always. This man, 23 wins. All of his wins coming by way of knockout against a single sole defeat. 28 years of age, originally from Ukraine, now residing in Los Angeles. He has been on an absolute tear, looking to make it six straight victories on Saturday night. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Sergey Bohachuk. Hi guys, I'm happy to be here. It's a big show for me. And I show my fans, I'm sure everything is good fight. Coming on Saturday and I'm sure an interesting show. Thank you. Yes, a man of few words, that is Sergei Bochuk, but let me tell you, he does all his talking inside the ring. What a matchup that's going to be between Brian Mendoza and Sergei Bochuk. Well, also, now I want to get into the main event of our PBC on Prime Video card before the PBC pay-per-view on Prime Video. Want to acknowledge Stephen Breadman Edwards, who is the trainer of Chiron and Davis from Philadelphia. Let's give a round of applause to Stephen Breadman Edwards who has been in the trenches in some big fights as well. This man, 18 wins, three losses, one draw, six wins coming by way of knockup. A native of Wilmington, Delaware, training in Philadelphia, as I mentioned, alongside Stephen Breadman Edwards, scored two wins in 2023, including most recently having earned a unanimous decision victory over Cruz Stewart back in December. The one thing about this man is that he's always in shape. He will take on anybody and everybody. He's prepared to go on the road. Anytime you call him, he's ready to step inside the ring and put his skills to the test against the world's best. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Chiron. Shut it down, uh, Davis. Hey, what's going on? Um, we flew out here to make a, make a point. I'm going to win on Saturday. There's not really much to say. I train hard. This isn't one of those fights where they throw me in two weeks. It's not one of them fights where, you know, I, I came in and saved the show. Um, this is one of them fights where I get to show y'all who I am, and I'm excited for it. Y'all going to get a great fight because this is a good fighter right here. So, I mean, I appreciate y'all for showing up, and I'm going to show out. 
Thank you to uh, Kyron Davis. So you hear how confident he is, no doubt, and he deserves to be with what he's been able to do over the course of his career. Well, when people ask about who could potentially be the next young star in boxing, you have to look at what this young man has been able to do. Fighting out of Phoenix, Arizona, burst onto the scene last year with three impressive wins. No stranger to fighting on big cards. He followed up a knockout of the previously unbeaten Amil Calvidal with wins on the Davis versus Garcia and Canelo versus Charlo undercards. His record, 16 wins, no losses. 13 wins coming by way of knockout. His stock continues to rise, and he looks for the biggest win of his career on Saturday. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Elijah Garcia. Hey, what's going on, guys? Um, you know, we're going to have a great fight, uh, a great night of fights. Uh, I got a lot on my plate right now. You know, uh, Davis, he's very experienced. Um, you know, he's, he's dangerous, and if I'm not prepared, you know, I, I think he will win. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to be ready to, you know, perform at my highest level, and uh, we'll take it from there. I also want to acknowledge Jorge Garcia, the father and the trainer of Elijah Garcia. It's a family affair with the Garcia family. Great to see Jorge Garcia here as well. Boy, talk about some outstanding trainers here on the stage. I want to go, first of all, to Brian Mendoza. Brian, when you went ahead and fought, you know, you went to Australia, you fought Tim Zoom. Uh, you're a warrior. What did you learn in that that you feel you're going to be able to benefit from on Saturday against Sergei Boachuk? Um, I feel like uh, they have in, you know, some similarities in style, but I feel like Tim is obviously a lot more polished, you know. Um, he's already at that level and stuff, and I just gained a lot of experience, man, and I'm out here chasing greatness each time out. And, you know, you see, uh, obviously, like, no fear of taking any of these fights. I took this fight. They called on two weeks' notice for it, but like I said, we stay ready, so I have no doubt that my conditioning is there, and um, you guys can expect another spectacular victory on Saturday night. People remember the win that you had over Sebastian Fundora. How much do you want to turn back the clock and sort of have another big moment like that here in Las Vegas? You guys see, you know, um, I'm actually underdog in this fight again. Uh, you guys see, you know, when I have a chip on my shoulder, what I get done. And um, I I'm, I'm very hungry for this fight, and I have a lot to prove on Saturday night. All right, Brian Mendoza, greatly appreciate him. Good luck to you, sir, on a Saturday. Sir, hey, Boa, Chuck. As you prepare for Brian Mendoza, you know how much of a tough competitor he is. He's a world-class opponent. Uh, you were supposed to be fighting Sebastian Fundora, but now change in opponent as Fundora will be fighting Tim Zhu. What went through your mind when they asked you, do you want to fight Brian Mendoza? So Brian is a good fighter. It's a good experience for me. It's a big fight for my career. And uh, I'm ready for good for this fight because I know what what this fight for me is a big fight for me when I win this fight and and, and continue for bigger fight Mendo uh, Zoo or uh, Fundora it's uh, it's now I need to win this fight I contention has hundred percent for this fight I'm have good opponent he is good boxer I know I'm ready for him I'm ready I'm show you know I not too much talking I'm show Saturday. I'm sure such a good fight, great fight, and guys coming, and I show everyone interesting boxing. Sir, hey, what has been the key to your recent run? You have been victorious in five straight fights. Uh, is it a confidence thing? Is it just you working on certain mechanics? What has been the key to your recent run of success? Yeah, by all means. Thank God. Uh, Sir, he gained a great deal of experience. I, I, I believe that you always learn more from your defeats than you do from your wins. So that was a great uh, experience for him when he came coming off that loss. After that loss, he came back to the gym and he came back a better fighter. Uh, he's been proving that time after time. I mean, he's on a roll with, you know, all his wins are by knockout. Uh, and he's been maturing. He's just been getting better with every fighter. And I believe he's ready for the, for the test at hand come uh, Saturday Final question night. to uh, Sergei is, do you believe that you are now at your most dangerous because of what you learned and now in the midst of this win streak? You think that you're ready now for this event because of your loss? Uh, you know, uh, I'm ready for 100%. You know, I'm have, uh, mm, I have a loss. It's, I, I don't think it's not loss. It's, 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 it's experience for me. Yes, many right, many tell me out of fight. It's, it's not loss for you. Experience for you is no more. 
and uh, I'm lose this fight because I'm lost hat in this fight. I'm I wanna win uh, KO. I wanna win KO. I needed KO. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. No, I needed. To now I'm smart. That now I'm um, more smart. That more, more have more experience. And now I'm ready for a big fight. All right, sir. Hey, Boga Chuck, ladies and gentlemen, good luck to you on Saturday. Speaking of experience. Kyron Davis, you have quite a bit of experience as you prepare to take on this young lion in Elijah Garcia. Uh, knowing that as people look at this fight, I, I would gather that you are likely the underdog. Do you pay attention to that? Do you use that as bulletin board material? Or, or what are your thoughts on that? It don't matter to me. You know, uh, I got nobody can fight the fight but me and him. So what you think really don't matter. You know what I'm saying? So I don't look at it. I don't, I don't really care much about it. But I think I am a dunder dog, though. They, somebody told me that, but it is what it is. I know you've taken short notice fights before, but to my knowledge, you got plenty of notice for this matchup. Do you believe on Saturday we are going to see the most complete version of Kyron Davis? Oh, my do. I think you're going to see a lot, of, a lot of things come together. You know, you got, when you got two weeks and, you know, there ain't no time, especially training for somebody like David Benavidez in two weeks and to fight the way I fought, you know what I'm saying? Like, two weeks, I mean like a real two weeks. I mean like two weeks, like, come out the club, go, go train for two weeks, and then go fight, you feel so what I'm saying? So it wasn't like yeah. you weren't even it in camp. It wasn't even like, you know what I'm saying? So that's just kind of fighter I am, though. I, I get in there and fight with anybody, you know what I mean? I'm just like that, you know? But, you know, I had time for this training camp. It's no, it's no excuses ever, but I had time, so he gonna feel it. Is this the moment where, if you're able to get your hand raised on Saturday, where you literally catapult yourself into the top rankings of the division? Um, I think so. I think, I think a, win, a win on Saturday puts me in position for a world title shot. So that's what we're looking for. Kyron Davis, ladies and gentlemen, now we'll go to Elijah Garcia. Elijah, you know, you had a very big 2023. You fought on some big cards, as we mentioned but now it's no longer that you are just here. People expect certain performances from you. How do you handle that pressure, or is it pressure to you? No, nah, it, it's not really pressure, to be honest. You know, 2023 was a great year, but, you know, now we're in 2024, so I don't want to look back too much. But, uh, you know, it was it was real good experience. Um, you know, it it's going to help me out a lot this fight and uh you know to knock people out or whatever that that don't really put no pressure on me um it's more about just you know performing right and uh listening to my corner that's what gets me the wins and uh you know sometimes the knockouts well let's talk about your opponent Kyron Davis uh, you know what kind of statement are you looking to make against a guy who has put himself in there against world champions you know he's very durable he's smart uh, comes from a very good you know, background, training under the guidance of Stephen Brad, Matt Edwards. But, you know, how big of a fight and how much of a statement do you want to make on Saturday? It's a real big fight for me, you know. Um, to be honest, you know, Davis, he's, he's a real he's, – he's a dog, man. You know, I've seen him fight Benavidez. He didn't quit. Um, he's, he's for real. He's legit. And, um, you know, this is a real dangerous fight for me because, you know, he has three losses. He's 29 years old, and he ain't got nothing to lose. So if I didn't, you know, give – 100% in training or 100% or whatever, you know, he, he could win. And, uh, you know, this is just going to be another good fight, uh, another round of experience for me. And, uh, you know, hopefully right afterwards we'll be able to get that title shot. And um, that's, that's what I'm looking for. So your next fight, if you are victorious on Saturday, you want a title shot or possibly an eliminator matchup? Yes, sir. Kyron, when he talks about this being a potential dogfight, I know that it's not going to be difficult for you to find this guy. You know, some guys like to move around and, and they try to be a bit trickier. But Elijah Garcia seems to be willing to engage with you. And, you know, how much are you excited about that prospect? I mean, if it get like that, it get like that. You know, I'm ready for whatever. So um, it's going to be a good fight. I mean, he bring it, I'm going to bring it. You know what I mean? But we'll see what happens. All right, I'm going to go around to the uh, – Four fighters and get their final comments. I will start with you, Brian Mendoza. Saturday night, as you take on Sergey Boachuk for the interim WBC Super Welterweight Championship of the World, your prediction? I believe this fight ends before the, the distance. Um, I don't think this will go all 12 rounds, and I will be victorious. Brian Mendoza predicting a stoppage, ladies and gentlemen. Sergey Boachuk, for you, how is the fight going to end on Saturday against Brian Mendoza? You know, and... Um, 
he is good opponent and I know this and I am ready for 12 rounds, I am ready for 20 rounds, you know, it's for me, I am ready for distance, maybe KO, I, I, I tell every time, I don't know what's he ready, you know, maybe he's ready good, maybe 12 rounds, he's ready for this fight, no good, maybe KO, I'm, I, I'm, I'm try, I'm, uh, I'm show Saturday in this. Sergey Boachuk, ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for Sergey Boachuk. Very confident indeed. You want to finish off your point? He's good. All right. Well, now we will go to Kyron Davis. I know you have a lot of confidence, Kyron, as you prepare for this, your biggest assignment of your career against Elijah Garcia. How's it going to unfold? Oh, um, my hand raised. Real simple. Just at the end of the day, Kyron shut it down, Davis. Women's in Delaware. Kyron Davis, ladies and gentlemen. Now I will end it with Elijah Garcia before we get to our pay-per-view main card. Elijah on Saturday against Kyron Davis. How do you see the fight transpiring? Uh, I, see, I see a real good fight, uh, but most definitely I see myself winning. Um, I want to thank all my family that came out here. Um, I want to thank my training, my management, and I want to thank my Savior Christ. Um, with, without him, nothing would be possible, and you know, I'm just prepared to put on a fight for the fans. All right, at this time, we're going to pose the fighters off, and then we will get ready for our pay-per-view main card. The fighters will stand up. They will have their customary face-off. And ladies and gentlemen, this will be live at 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific time. PBC on Prime Video, preceding the pay-per-view, streaming live and for free, 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific time here in Las Vegas. All right, so those are our opening two matchups. Right now, we are going to take a closer look at our fighters involved in our final two fights of the evening. Hola, 
cuando ya tiene fecha de pelea, a uno como esposa sí le entra un, ne un nervio, porque pues sabemos que son golpes al fin y al cabo y pues ni Dios lo quiera puede pasar algo, ¿no? Entonces sí empieza un nervio, una ansiedad. En ese aspecto es difícil. Tuvimos un inicio de pareja muy, muy duro. No, no teníamos algo estable prácticamente de todo un año que tuvimos que remar contra corriente. No teníamos dónde vivir, no había veces que se nos dificultaba hasta para la alimentación, pues no había dinero. Entonces, este, pues, este fue muy complicado. Yo como el hombre de la casa no tenía, llegó un momento, un punto donde no tenía que ofrecerles tan siquiera una tortilla, ¿no? Es que son muchos recuerdos de cuando la pasamos mal. Cuando este, pues la pasamos difícil. Pues sí, son recuerdos muy, muy difíciles. Desgraciadamente se quedan muy marcados esos recuerdos por los momentos difíciles, que a pesar de eso, pues, fueron unas pruebas muy, muy, muy duras en nuestra persona, en nuestra relación y como pareja que, que Dios nos mandó para ver si realmente éramos uno para el otro o como quien dice, no, nada más nos interesaba lo, lo material, lo económico o lo físico, ¿no? Pues gracias al, al apoyo de mi esposa, pues para que se fijara y pudiéramos hacer algo en el boxeo y poder despuntar la carrera. I do my training with my uncle, Eagle. He is my coach who started with me from the very day one. He taught me how to throw a jab. To, to the position we're in now, uh, defending our WBO belt at the T-Mobile Arena. The passion and, and love for each other has always been there. Eagle has known me since a, since a young boy, since, since birth, actually, so we don't need to say much. We just let our actions do the talking. I grew up in an environment where losing was not an option. My father is a great Australian sporting icon, Kostya Zhu. Uh, he was the undisputed champ, uh, defeated a lot of great world champions. Round two, Zab Judah. Everyone remembers the knockout. This is my dad back in the days, and his road style was real long. He used to be a bit flashy with his gold Rolex and his gold chains. <laughs> my dad grew up in a, a small Soviet little city, uh, Sarov, Russia, 100,000 people. It was a mining town. And the fact that he came to Australia gave us life, gave us opportunity. And that's what boxing did. It, it really gave us everything. He always used to say, I'm the king of the world and I'm the best. I'm the best. So there, there always, always used to be belief. I grew up with that mentality and it's something that I've just embraced as part of my life. I don't, I don't see my dad much. These days, he lives in Russia, I live in Australia. Uh, we still talk, of course, all the time. As soon as I started my professional career, I wanted to become my own name, Tim Zhu, rather than Kostya's son. I'm in this sport, and it's me doing the punching, it's me doing everything, it's me doing the training, it's no one else. We're gonna be here, fighting. Pretty unreal, huh? I think we've reached to that point where we where people are saying, oh, you're, you're not Kostya's son, but he is Tim's dad. This should be made here. This should be made. As we are getting set for our pay-per-view press conference, here in Las Vegas at the MGM Grand. It is great to be with all of you, but we are now going to hear from all eight fighters involved in our PBC pay-per-view on Prime Video. Here is how Premier Boxing Champions kicks off 2024. With four world championship fights, every single fight 
on this pay-per-view is a World Championship Showdown and could very well be a main event anywhere in the world. We will start off with our pay-per-view opener. This one for the WBCS Flyweight Championship of the World. This man is the challenger. 18 wins, no losses, one draw. 12 wins coming by way of knockout. 28 years of age from Ciudad Bolivar, Venezuela, training out of Roselle Park, New Jersey. An experienced amateur who debuted back in 2017, having come off the biggest win of his career as he topped the former world champion, Angel Acosta. He looks to make himself into the history books and become a world champion from his home country of Venezuela. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Angelino Cordova. Buenas tardes a todos los presentes, al equipo de prensa. Pues primeramente, dando las gracias a Dios por estar en este momento compartiendo dicho momento, pues muy alegre, muy contento eh, en, en celebrar eh, ya este día de rueda de prensa y pues esperando que todo se mantenga de bien y que pues sea un programa... Eh, lleno de bendición para todos, la verdad, eh, muy contento, muy contento, muchas gracias. Well, thank you very much everybody for being here, I want to thank the members of the media for being here at this press conference, and I'm really happy, I'm really excited to be a part of this event, I hope that everything turns out well, and that everyone is full of uh, blessings and enjoys what's going to be a great event, a great fight between us and for the whole car too. So thank you very much for having me here. Angelina Cordova, ladies and gentlemen. Also, we have Martin Botzer, our outstanding translator here as well. So that is the chat review opener. Now champion, 20 wins, two losses, 15 wins coming by way of knockout. He has trained under the guidance of renowned trainer, that being Eddie Reynoso, captured his title back in 2019 with a ninth round stoppage over Christopher Rosales. The one thing I hear about this man is that boy is he hitting his stride and he has looked sensational in training camp and really wants to put forth a major statement on Saturday as he defends his crown against Angelino Cordova. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the reigning and defending WBC flyweight champion of the world from Mexico, Julio Cesar Martinez. Buenos días a todos. Muchas gracias por, por estar aquí. Muy contento, muy emocionado de, de regresar al ring. Pues hubo unos inconvenientes, pero bendito sea Dios, ya, ya estamos de regreso. Contentos, emocionados, motivados. Y siempre, ¿verdad? Con todo menos con miedo. Thank you very much, guys, everybody, everybody for being here. And I'm so excited, so pumped, so motivated to be here. And like I always say, with everything but with fear, right? Thank you very much to Julio Cesar Martinez. Let's give it up for the champion, ladies and gentlemen. All right, now we will transition to our second pay-per-view fight, this one being for the WBA Middleweight Championship of the World. And the challenger in this one. Well, Australia is represented in more ways than one, not just with the esteemed Tim Zhu. This man has a record of 31 wins, four losses, 19 wins coming by way of Naka. He is the number one ranked mandatory WBA challenger at 160 pounds. Joining us from Melbourne, Australia, he is looking to extend his win streak to five, having won four straight. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Michael Zarafa. Thanks, guys. I just want to uh, thank everyone that's uh, shown their love and support, everyone that's made the, uh, the flight over. I wouldn't be here without you guys. Um, I ho I hopefully we go back with two Australian world titles, or three, because Tim's fighting for, for two. Um, PBC, Al Heyman, thanks for the opportunity. And uh, Aussie, 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 let's do it. 
Michael Zarafa, ladies and gentlemen. Also, Michael, I need to find out your tailor from Australia. That's a very sharp suit, my friend. Very much. I'm taking some notes on that. Well, now, ladies and gentlemen, let's meet the reigning WBA middleweight champion of the world, a Cuban star who resides here in Las Vegas. He is boxing's oldest reigning world champion, still going strong at 40 years of age. Uh, he certainly has been in there against the world's best time and time again. An extensive amateur background has been extremely successful as a professional, and yet he still c competes at this very high level and, and certainly has his sights focused on bigger things if he's able to top Michael Zarafa on Saturday. But it's great to see him back in the ring. He provided us with absolute barn burners against the likes of Jared Hurd, took Canelo Alvarez, gave him a very stiff test years ago. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the reigning and defending WBA middleweight champion of the world. Here is at Islandi, the American Dream Alada. Buenas tardes a todos. Este, quiero darle las gracias a Amazon Prime, PBC, a Luis de Cuba Junior, a Estín Serafa, a Estín Lara, por, por darme esta oportunidad de estar de, de regreso en, en 30 de marzo. Listo, estamos listos ya, nos vemos el 30 de marzo. Es lo único que puedo decir. Gracias. Gracias. Quiero agradecer a PBC, Amazon Prime, eh, Luis de Cuba Junior, Tim Serafa, Tim Lara por hacer esto posible. And I'm going to see you on Saturday, May, March 30th. And all I have to say is I'm ready to go. I'm pumped up. And you're going to see a great fight. All right. All right. That is a very motivated Ed Islandi Ladam that will be defending his world championship against Michael Zarafa. That, the second pay-per-view fight. It is PBC pay-per-view on Prime Video, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific time, this upcoming Saturday night from T-Mobile Arena here in Las Vegas. Now, before I get ready to introduce the next man involved in the co-main event, I want to acknowledge Isaac Cruz Sr., who is in the house, ladies and gentlemen, the father of Isaac Cruz. Let's give a round of applause to Isaac Cruz Sr., who is here. Great to see him during fight week and has been so instrumental in the success of his son. Now let's meet his son. 25 wins, two losses, one draw. 17 wins coming by way of knockout. A native of Mexico City who has established himself as one of the sport's most exciting fighters. I can recollect back, it was October of 2020. It was the first fight when Trevante Davis fought Leo Santa Cruz and he wiped out Diego Magdaleno. Vicious body shots in, I believe, under a minute. And that is when I knew firsthand that he was a force to be reckoned with. He has been in battles against the likes of Gervonta Davis. Most recently, last July, defeated Giovanni Cabrera and has such a loyal fan following because he brings it from the moment the bell rings to the moment the bell ends in the 12th. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Damas y Caballeros desde Mexico, Isaac. Pitbull Cruz. Hola, ¿qué tal? Muy buenas tardes a todos. Muchas gracias por todo. Gracias a Al Hyman, a PBC, a Sean Gibbons, a todos y a este bocón también por darme la oportunidad y venimos a quitarle la, el bocón y el título del mundo. Muchas gracias. Well, good afternoon, everybody. I want to thank uh, PBC, Amazon, Sean Gibbons, and everybody that has made this fight possible, and also to this loudmouth over here, because I'm here to shut his mouth and take the belt. So get ready. All right, Isaac Pitbull Cruz, ladies and gentlemen, he is the challenger. And now let's meet the champion, but before I get into the specifics on the champion, I want to acknowledge the promoter of Rolando Roli Romero, Mr. Leonard Ellerby, the CEO of Mayweather Promotions. I believe Leonard is around here somewhere, so let's have a round of applause for Leonard Ellerby and also the esteemed trainer of Rolando Roli Romero, Mr. Ismael Salas as well. So round of applause for Ismael Salas, who has uh, quite a busy night 
on Saturday. Well, this man, 15 wins, one loss, 13 wins coming by way of knockout. He is, he came coming off of a very impressive win when he stopped Ismael Barroso last May. And the thing about that fight is that he had to dig deep and he came out and he never, his confidence never wavered and he was able to go out there and he was able to finish off Ismael Barroso. Tony Weeks stepped in and waved off the fight. I would have to say though, he's been in a battle with Gervonta Davis. He's been in some big fights and He's one of the most unique personalities that the sport has seen in quite some time. Let's just say that he beats to his own drum. He does things the roly way. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the reigning and defending WBA super lightweight champion of the world. Here is Rolando Roli Romero. How's everybody doing today? Uh, I just want to thank Al Hammond, my promoter, Mayor of Promotions. Um, Louis DeCuba Jr. and uh, well, everybody else who came out here to support me. Everybody thinks it's going to be a difficult fight, but I think it's going to be a very easy fight for me. He's going to run right into something because he's stupid. So, yeah, that's that. All right, well, confidence in abundance is Rolando Roli Romero, certainly ahead of Saturday's collision as world title defense against Isaac Pitbull Cruz. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready for our main event. This is going to be for the WBO and the vacant WBC Super Welterweight Championships of the World. Before I do that, I want to bring up an Acknowledge the challenger, Freddy Fundora, who is the father and the trainer of the Tyrant Inferno, Sebastian Fundora. There is Freddy Fundora over here. Round of applause for Freddy Fundora. The Fundora family, certainly you have Gabriela as well, who's the world champion, and Sebastian looking to follow in her footsteps. Awesome. The promoter of Sebastian Fundora, Samson Lukowitz, ladies and gentlemen. Talk about talent. This man knows how to find it anywhere on the globe. This man with the record of 20 wins, one loss, one draw, 13 wins coming by way of knockout, 26 years of age from Coachella, California, standing nearly six feet, six inches tall. He's been involved in some memorable matchups, including the 2022 fight of the year against Erickson Hammer Lubin. Every time this guy has fought, he always brings it. I mean, no one thing about Sebastian Fundora is that he will entertain fans and he will risk himself to go out there and throw punches in bunches because he loves to entertain. He loves high contact, he loves to mix it up, and he loves to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. And now, on Saturday, he looks for the biggest moment of his career. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the towering inferno, Sebastian Fundura. Hello everybody, uh, thank you for coming out. You know, uh, I wanna thank Samson, I wanna thank Al Heyman, thank the PBC team and Amazon Prime Video for giving me this chance. I wanna thank Tim Sue as well for giving me the opportunity. But uh, what a change of events, huh? From opening the card to now fighting our main event right here in the fight capital of the world, Las Vegas. It's gonna be great. Walking in, uh, Sam Watson told me I must have had an angel or someone praying for me because uh, this is a big opportunity. And this is a big opportunity we're gonna take advantage of and become world champion on Saturday night. Sebastian Fundora, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, Fundora was supposed to fight Sergei Bohochuk, but due to the injury to Keith Thurman, he now is in the main event against the man who I'm getting ready to introduce. Well, first of all, before I get ready to acknowledge him, I want to acknowledge I Igor Gulabev, the trainer of Tim Zhu, and also George Rose, the CEO of No Limit Boxing as well, a very instrumental in the success of Tim Zhu. This man, 24 wins, no losses, 17 victories coming by way of knockout. A native of Sydney, Australia, certainly a rising star. He is the son of the Hall of Famer, Kostya Zub. Tim comes off of a red-hot 2023, a water run that he had, beating the likes of Tony Harrison, Brian Mendoza, and Carlos Ocampo. He is a superstar in his home country of Australia. But the one thing that he's always said is that I want to come here to Las Vegas and headline a massive night of boxing as a world champion. 
Well, Tim, ask and you shall receive, and you've earned every bit of it. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the pride and joy of Australia. Here is the undefeated and the reigning and defending WBO Super Welterweight Champion of the World. Here is Tim Azoo. Look, we're finally here. It's been, a, it's been a long road, uh, but I've dreamt of this moment my whole life, you know. Every, every moment that I've done has led to this point, and, and I'm glad to be doing it and representing everyone and, and doing it on this uh, specific, specific day. You know, it's been a change of events, but you know what? The show goes on. We saved it. Uh, destiny awaits, and uh, I can't wait to put on a show. Uh, I should be having two belts now. I don't know why, why that belt's there. He, he hasn't earned it yet. Uh, it should be in the middle here. But Saturday night, we get to, we get to fight for, for both of them. For me, this, this period of time, it's about collecting belts, collecting legacy. And again, as I said previously before, the greatest boxing family ever lived. It's happening right now, right here. So tune in. Tim Zhu, ladies and gentlemen, as Tim mentioned, he's looking to further that family legacy. Well, what a start that he has had. And now I'm going to talk with the fighters. I'll start off with Angelino Cordova. Angelino, have you thought about the moment that if you're able to top your adversary on Saturday when they say, and the new WBC flyweight champion of the world, what that would mean for you and your home country of Venezuela? Cabeza en la almohada. ¿Te imaginas el momento en el que vas a poder eh, eh, decir y el nuevo y, y todo lo que va a significar para Venezuela, no? ¿Qué, qué, ¿Cómo te lo imaginas a eso? Oye, bueno, oye, sí, oye, la verdad, eh, sí me lo imagino, sí me imagino ese momento. Y pues no es desde ahora, desde hace mucho tiempo. Sí, y pues ya se ha llegado el momento, se acerca y pues y nada, estoy muy lleno de emoción y pues nada, solo llegará el momento, esperando. I've been picturing this not just in the past few days, but for a long time now. And I can't wait till that moment comes and I get to make my country proud. And you know, it's, I'm full of emotion, I'm full of excitement, I'm so excited and I can't wait to make it come true. What kind of fighter are you expecting from the champion Julio Cesar Martinez? What type of fight do you expect from Martinez as a rival? What type of fight do you expect from the part of Martinez as a rival? Well, I come as the music says. Well, at the rhythm that he plays, I'm going to dance. At the rhythm that he plays, I'm going to be there. Well, it's gonna be it's gonna be like a concert, right? And you gotta dance to the beat. So while, so whatever beat Martinez brings, I'm gonna dance right along to it, and I'm gonna be very comfortable doing so. All right, Angelina Cordova. Now I'm gonna go to the champion Julio Cesar Martinez. Julio Cesar, being the first fight on the pay-per-view, how big of an honor is this for you as you prepare to defend your world championship against Angelina Cordova? Qué tan honrado se sentís de ser la primera pelea del pay-per-view por Amazon Prime. Pues muy contento, muy emocionado que vamos a regresar pues de, de unos meses de inactividad y pues unos problemas que hubieron ahí, pero pues contento, motivado como siempre, no al 100 sino al 1000 y como siempre, ¿verdad? Con quien sea y donde sea, para darlo todo arriba del ring. I'm really, I'm really excited to be back after a couple of months away. We had some setbacks, but... You know, in, in the end, it's all about what happens inside the ring. I'm really, I'm really happy, really excited to do it. And I'm going to go up against anybody, anytime. I'm always saying it, and I'm saying it now, too. Let's bring it on. All right, Julio Cesar Martinez, ladies and gentlemen. Greatly appreciate him, and good luck to both men. Now, Michael Zarafa. Michael, you are trained by Nonito Donair. You have been your corner, and obviously, I know that you are looking to create your own history. How influential has the four-division world champion been in your preparation for this matchup? It's been huge. You know, I'm super grateful for having Nonito in my corner um, and, he, and his beautiful wife, Rachel. You know, he's a very spiritual fighter. You know, everyone knows that, you know, physically, 
I'll push the body, but uh, you know, mentally, emotionally, he's worked throughout the whole camp, and um, you know, I haven't flown all over the other world, other side to uh, to be an opponent. So I'm here to, to take what's rightfully mine. This fight should have been done 13 months ago, and um, you know, come Saturday, there will be a, a new world champion. For you and for Australian boxing, how big of a night is this for the entire country in terms of how far boxing has come in Australia? Yeah, this is huge. Um, you know, you've got the likes of Liam Wilson fighting tomorrow night from Australia. Um, you've got myself, you've got Tim Zhu. Um, you know, there's George Cambosis, you know, Liam Paro. You know, the list goes on. We're, we're putting uh, a small country on a, on a big map, you know, and uh, we're taking over come Saturday night. All right, Michael Zaralfa, the challenger for the WBA Middleweight Championship of the World. Now, Ed Islandi Latam. Ed Islandi, you know, they always say that absence makes the heart grow fonder. You've been off for a bit of time. How much have you missed competing inside the ring, and how much are you looking forward to going head-to-head -head against Michael Zaralfa? Ed Islandi, bueno, te extrañamos, ¿verdad? Se ha pasado un tiempo desde que te vimos pelear, pero qué tan emocionado estás vos de poder estar de regreso en el cuadrilátero y demostrar a la gente de lo que sos capaz. Bueno, estoy contento de estar de regreso en, eh, el 30 de marzo, este, muy emocionado y estoy muy activo y me siento suficientemente bien para derrotar a Serafa el 30 de marzo. Ya estamos en tiempo, ya que en estos momentos, yo sé que es lo que la gente le gusta, ¿no? pero yo no soy de hablar mucho, yo soy de demostrar en el ring y Serafa y su team me, me verán el 30 de marzo. Look, I'm not a big talker. I'm someone that proves what I'm worth inside the ring. And Team Seraf is going to realize that on Saturday night. I'm very, I'm very glad to be back in the ring after, after some time off. But look, I've stayed active. I feel ready. And you'll see what I'm capable of. What kind of statement are you looking to make on Saturday? ¿Qué tipo de mensaje estás tratando de enviar este sábado? Este sábado voy a enviar un mensaje que todavía hay Erilando y Lara para pa rato y voy a seguir siendo campeón a 160 libras para seguir con los, peleadores, con los mejores peleadores. The statement is that Eris Lani Lara is still here to stay. I'm not going anywhere, and I want to go up against the best after this fight as well. Eris Lani Lara, ladies and gentlemen, the WBA middleweight champion of the world, now co-main event, Isaac Pitbull Cruz. Isaac, we see that you look in outstanding physical shape. Uh, what do you feel the difference is going to be on Saturday against Rolando Roli Romero? Isaac, te vemos en una forma física espléndida. ¿Qué pensás que es lo que marcará la diferencia contra Roy Romero este sábado? Eh, pues el trabajo que venimos haciendo durante toda la preparación, antes de que acabara el año también, y las ganas de ser nuevo campeón del mundo y ganar el campeonato cueste lo que cueste. It's all going to be about the foundation we have set as a team training since the end of last year, really. I want to be the new champion. That's the main goal, and nobody's going to take my size away from that. What did you learn in your first world title opportunity against Gervonta Davis that you feel you're going to be able to utilize to your benefit on Saturday against Roley? ¿Cuál fue la lección principal que aprendiste de tu pelea contra Gervonta que, que, que pensás que se podría aplicar en esta pelea de sábado contra Roley? Eh, el aprendizaje fue de no dejarle nada a los jueces y para eso me preparé. Traigo el aire suficiente para estar tirando segundo tras segundo golpes. I learned that I don't have to leave it up to the judges. Uh, I, I want to go out there and throw punch after punch. I'm in good enough shape to do so from beginning to end. Does he annoy you when he says, I'm going to knock you out, and he even said in his opening comments, it's going to be easy? ¿Te molesta cuando Rolly dice cosas como que te va a noquear, que va a ser fácil, que, que vas a ser golpeado por él porque sos estúpido? ¿Qué te, qué te generan ese tipo de comentarios? Pues nada, él, él está yo creo que más estúpido porque piensa que voy a subir amarrado de las manos o con los ojos vendados, pero él también no se da cuenta que va a estar sentado en un barril de pólvora y que él también va a salir noqueado. If he thinks I'm stupid, he's even stupider because what does he think that I'm going to have like a bandage around my eyes and my hands tied? If, if he thinks that I'm just going to lay down, he's very, very mistaken and he's going to realize it on Saturday night. Roly. Going to your point and furthering that, uh, why do you feel it's going to be easy? I know yesterday you mentioned to me it could very well be the fight of the year, but now today you're saying it's going to be easy. You're saying that he's going to run into something. Why do you feel it is going to be sort of, quote unquote, uh, a walk in the park for you on Saturday? Well, I mean, he said it himself right now. He's just going to come over there and throw and throw and throw and throw. He did the same shit over and over and over again. 
One over here, one over here, gets punted over here, gets punted over here. Same shit over and over again. What do you have on your, uh, you have a chain that I see can, um, you explain that to, to the uh, fans and the media around the world. So explain to us what you are wearing. This right here is my good luck charm. It's Chihuahua Cruz. So it is Chihuahua Cruz. Let's go ahead and take a look at that with our camera. Isaac, how do you respond to that? He's wearing a chain calling you a uh, Chihuahua and he's wearing you on his neck. I'm going to give it to you after the fight. I'm going to give it to you after the fight. I'm going to give it to you after the fight. I can give you the belt, but I can give you the chain if you want after the fight. So, Rolly, are you going to put that chain on the line as well with your belt? No, he already got it after I knocked his ass out. All right, so in terms of how much of a statement that would be, if you follow through on your prediction and you're able to knock out Isaac Pitbull Cruz, how big would that be for you uh, in your career? We can go ahead and just pass along the microphone. There you go. How big would it be if you're able to follow through on your prediction and knock him out? Because, I mean, he's very durable, very determined, went the distance with Javante Davis. I mean, like I said, I mean, it's a great opportunity. That, uh, that I've been given over here, but in reality, the opportunities for him to try to win the belt, I'm already champion. I don't need him. I'm the one that made this fight. It wasn't him. Right or wrong? Well, you could have fought any variety of different guys, but why did you decide to settle on Isaac Cruz? Because I want to make a fire fight. I want to make it fun. I want to make it fun for the fans. And this is the fight that all everyone's been asking for for the longest amount of time. Right or wrong? Oh, you're right. Okay, so... Well, let's talk about I'm doing, your I'm trainer. Doing, I'm doing everybody a favor right now. This is going to be a fun one. Y'all going to see it. Tune in March 30th, Amazon Prime pay-per-view. Ismael Salas, we've been seeing videos of you. You've been, you know, working with Ismael Salas, moving around, doing a lot of feints and, and head movement. Uh, how much better do you feel with Ismael Salas that you guys are reunited? Honestly, it feels great. You know, it feels like I'm, you know, like... Like, I'm back at home, you know? Like I say, he, he had a big influence on my, you know, especially before, right before I turned pro. Like, literally, I got signed to Floyd literally, what, two weeks after I, uh, you know, I, I, I left the gym. So, I mean, he had a big influence on me, and me being the fastest person to ever get signed to a major promoter as well. Got started at 17, I got signed at 20. It's been an unbelievable journey. Rolanda Rolly Romero, ladies and gentlemen. Now let's focus in on our main event, Sebastian Fundorum. You took this fight on 11 days notice. You were supposed to fight on the card. Now you have the biggest opportunity of your career. You can pick up two world championships as you go head to head against Tim Zhu. What kind of moment are you looking to have on Saturday night on PBC pay-per-view on Prime Video? This is the moment that Tyrone Inferno becomes world champion. My sister did it six, six, six months ago. Now it's my turn. Did that really sort of invigorate you even that much more and everything else? I mean, we've heard it from fighters that you learn a lot when you have a stumble. Uh, how much has that impacted you as you prepare for the biggest moment of your career? You know, it, it, it happens in boxing. You know, uh, uh, I made a mistake. I paid for it. I feel like everything still lined up the way it should be. Uh, uh, um, they gave me this opportunity to fight Tim Sue. This is going to crown the best fighter at 154. All right, now let's go to the champion. We'll come back to you, Sebastian. Uh, Tim, you're going to be facing a, a literally a very tall task. Uh, for those that don't know, we talked about it yesterday, but this is the largest height disparity in a non-heavyweight fight. So, Tim, you know, he's not, he's literally very tall, and, and you know he's awkward, and he has a significant reach advantage. Uh, how have you been able to prepare for that on such short notice? Well, look, it's, it's quite hard to prepare, especially when you've got, well, 12 days. Uh, but a true champion just uh, rises to the occasion, adapts to everything that's put in front of them. So, you know, I came here as a, like a throwback fighter, and I, and I keep trying to put it, and I keep trying to be like that, you know? I, I am. I'm living the person that I, that I speak. I'm not, I'm not a bullshitter. I'm, I'm here to do exactly what I, what I say. And, and this is why I take the fight. And this is why, like, yes, height, uh, of course, there's, there's, there's many advantages. But look, we're, we all bleed the same blood. So there's no difference between us. And, and if, if, you know, if you're watching history, 
Mike Tyson did a lot of damage in the heavyweight division back in the days. So I guess I'm taking inspiration from, from Iron Mike in this one. Tim, for you, I remember when you fought Terrell Gachet in Minneapolis a couple of years ago, but this is something that you've always wanted. It was, it was one thing to fight in the United States and, and headline, but you've always said about main eventing here in Las Vegas. Watching you during fight week, you look to be so relaxed, comfortable. You're dealing with the media obligations. Uh, you're taking it all in stride. Is it because you always knew that if you put the work in that you would be here at this moment? Of course, you know, every, every, as I said previously, every moment has led to this. This is my 12th time doing pay-per-view, so I'm, I'm used to this, this bright, bright lights and, and all of this stuff. But I had a vision from, uh, I guess, from a young age. Uh, in 2009, I came here to watch Manny Pacquiao versus, versus Miguel Cotto, and I remember I had a tweak. I had a tweak in my, in my brain saying that this one day, this is where I want to be. And now I'm walking into this press conference and Miguel Cotto is sitting right here and I'm full fanboying. I, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> so, you know, like, it's a, it's a crazy moment for me to, to be in this position and, uh, and I'm taking it with, uh, with both hands. Sebastian, what kind of fight are you expecting out of Tim Zhu? We watched him last year. He went 3-0, and looked phenomenal in all three of his outings. But what kind of fight are you expecting out of him? I expect the, the best fight from Tim Sue. You know, this is, again, this is, I think, the best fight you can make at 154. He's uh, the number one in the weight right now. I think this, this fight with the unification of the WBO and WB, this will crown the new champion of the weight division. Tim, what kind of fight are you expecting from the towering inferno, Sebastian Fundora? You know that he loves to mix it up on the inside. Are you expecting anything less? No, I, I feel like he's coming in for the brawl. He's good at what he does. He's got these long lanky arms and uh, I know the shots it's all about eliminating what he's got and uh, showing what he's not good at and, and, and that's the best thing about boxing is that he gets to expose my weaknesses and I get to expose his weaknesses so it's, it's, it's going to be one, one hell of a barner let's just say that. Sebastian you're the underdog coming into this fight uh, does that motivate you at all is that sort of fuel for fire as you prepare on this opportunity on Saturday night PBC pay-per-view on Prime Video. Uh, a lot of people say I have these advantages, and I do. I do have these advantages, but I always look at myself as the underdog. Even when I had the interim champion, I considered myself the underdog. So it's just time to prove again what we're made of. Is this sort of have you even you know dreamt of how it could possibly be when you are able, if you're successful on Saturday, what holding both world titles would mean to you? It's a big deal. It's a big deal. This is my dream. This is my dream. I trained very hard my whole life to become and to fight on a stage like this, you know, uh, thank you to Samson, thank you to Al Heyman for giving me the, the opportunity to fight on this, uh, to fight my dream. And uh, come Saturday night, the dream come true. Tim, finally, before we go ahead and conclude, is this, assuming that everything goes your way on Saturday, is this the official declaration of the Tim Zhu era here in the United States, main eventing in Las Vegas for what I'm sure you want to be many times moving forward. Yeah, for sure. You know, this is step one to, to where I want to be. Uh, this is only a, a little part, you know. I've already won this belt uh, with Mendoza. Uh, now we go for the second. It should have been me, Mendoza, fighting for those two belts already. So uh, I don't know why his belt's there. Well, why am I saying his belt? Why, why is the, that belt even there? But yeah, this is a new era and uh, there's plenty of big, big super fights to be made in the, in the near future. All right, before I let these guys go, I'm going to start off with Angelina Cordova real quick. Prediction time. How's it going to end against Julio Cesar Martinez? What's your prediction for the fight on Saturday? How does it end? Knockout? Puntos? How? Well... Yo, la verdad, eh, no voy a decir nada. La verdad, lo que voy a decir es lo que repetí el día de ayer. Eh, el ring va a echar chispa. Así que, bueno, muy pendiente. Eso es lo que voy a decir. Muchas I'm not gracias. about to make a prediction, but I'm going to repeat what I said yesterday. You're going to see sparks fly. All right, Julio Cesar Martinez, your prediction against Angelino Córdoba. Bueno, Julio, eh, también tu vaticinio, ¿cómo termina esta pelea? ¿Por nocao, por puntos, cómo la ves? Pues venimos bien preparados, venimos como siempre lo he dicho, no venimos al 100 sino al 1000. Sabemos que es un peleador invicto, es, 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 es rápido y todo, venimos preparados para lo que sea. 
pero como siempre a dar lo mejor arriba del ring y que los dos bajemos con bien y a dar un, una buen, un buen sabor de pelea. I want to give the fans a great fight. I hope that we both give, give them not just a great fight, but that we both come out healthy after that. I'm going to come out at not 100%, at 1,000%, and it's going to be fireworks. People are going to love it. All right, good luck to both men. Michael Zarafa, your prediction, sir, for Saturday. Uh, come Saturday night, there'll be a new WBA world champion. Mark my words. Michael Zarafa predicting that he will be world champion. It is Landy Laram. How is the fight going to unfold against Michael Zarafa? Este, <laughs> vamos a trabajar duro el 30, el sábado, el 30 de marzo. Este, creo que se termina antes, antes ese round. Creo que lo voy a ganar. I'm going to work hard, and I'll tell you what. I think I'm going to knock him out, and not only that, it's going to happen before the sixth round. Wow. Ed Islandi, a lot of predicting a knockout in the first half of the fight. Very interesting. All right, co-made event. Isaac Pitbull Cruz, your prediction is the second time the charm for going after a world title. Bueno, Isaac, la segunda es la vencida. ¿Cuál es tu vaticinio para, para esta pelea por el título? Bajando Isaac como nuevo campeón del mundo. Isaac Cruz is going to be the new world champion. All right, Isaac Cruz, a man of few words. Rolando Roli Romero, you've been saying knockout the entire promotion. How is the fight going to end on Saturday? Knockout, so he's going to wake up off the canvas from his dream of becoming world champion. All right, Rolando Roli Romero, the WBA super lightweight champion of the world, now main event, the town inferno, Sebastian Fundora. Your prediction for your main event showdown against Tim Zhu. Uh, the second we stepped into Las Vegas, we clocked in. You know, uh, I'm ready to put in my work and, and, and become world champion Saturday night. All right, Sebastian Fundora. Now, Tim Zhu, you are undefeated. How do you see the fight transpiring against Sebastian Fundora? As history will repeat, David versus Goliath, don't blink. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a round of applause to all eight pay-per-view fighters. It is PBC Pay-Per-View on Prime Video this upcoming Saturday from T-Mobile Arena here in Las Vegas, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific time. Now we will pose off the fighters for their ceremonial face-offs. This Saturday night, rising star Sebastian the Towering Inferno Fundora steps up to take down undefeated champion Tim Zhu. But the wonder from down under